unbeaten fighters and major performers. I can't tell you how excited I am about this. This is Coogan Passes for IFL TV and Association of MTK Global. We're at the London Press Conference here for Saunders Murray. Oof, that was quick. I know, Roll, rolls off the tongue, Joe. <laughs> June 23rd at the O2. Uh, before we come on to that, first of all, I didn't get a chance to really grab you after uh, Carl's win on Saturday, but yeah. congratulations, uh, a great performance from Frampton. You must have been over the moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah everything went to plan. Um, Donair was dangerous right to the end, you see, in the, in the 11th round. So, uh, you know, I was I was saying to him during the fight, you know, have a little nudge with him, you know, have a little go see, see how he responds. If he digs his heels in and fights back, then just exit and just keep keep doing what you're doing because he was bossing it from the outside on the jab. So I knew he could dictate the pace like that. And uh, and you know, there was two scenarios. He was either Donair was going to either try and wait for him and set a trap and try and let him walk onto one, or he was going to throw all his eggs into one basket and give it five or six rounds and try and bomb him out. And it, you know, he went for the first option, tried to let him walk on to one. He caught him in the 11th round and, um, and he wobbled him a little bit. So you can see the old saying, the last thing to go is a punch. And uh, he was dangerous right to the end, but I, I was over the moon with his display. I thought he was disciplined, controlled, his jab was brilliant. And uh, and I think he sent a little bit of a message out to the fanboys. Mm. I mean, he got a, a tiny little bit of criticism uh, in his last performance, uh, but it shows with the better the opponent Carl's in with that you'll see the best I, of Carl Frampton that's very true in his course, case I think it's the true of any fighter at the stage Carl's at and the level he fights at you've got to be up against someone who gives you that you know gives you them butterflies in the belly to bring the best out of them um, I think him, him going in against someone like Valdez will definitely bring the best out of him hopefully if, the, if that fight can get made if Valdez is going to be fit um, he's going to take someone dangerous to, to, to bring the best out of Carl and honestly I, I really don't think you've seen the best of him he's, uh, he's improving he's, he's getting better and he's in a good place mentally as well which should always bring the best out of the fight we can look ahead to a great night in uh, Windsor Park yeah. next time out Frank saying sometime in August hopefully so yeah if that's for a world title or against someone like Valdez or of course you know. ideally you'd want it to be for a world title on a stage like that it's been his, he's been his dream as a kid um, to fight Windsor Park and I think the icing on the cake would be for it to be for a world title so you know maybe if Valdez isn't available then Warrington Selby winner maybe um, or if he's not going to be fit in time then apparently the Maybe he might, he might give the title up and Carlo box for the vacant title, but that's not an ideal scenario. If it has to happen that way, it has to happen that way, but I'd like him to fight Valdez and, and win the title in that sense. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, the atmosphere the other night was un, unbelievable. I was at, you know, ring, sat ringside for uh, Frotch Groves too, and uh, there, was, there was, what, 12,000 people there the other night, and it matched that. It was unbelievable. And, uh, you know, it's proud, proud to be part of it. I haven't seen it yet, but by all accounts, a good win for Tommy Cole against Sean oh, Dodd. Tommy Cole was brilliant, honestly. And uh, I'm so, so disappointed. I'm, I'm angry with Eddie for putting that show on the same night because we, you know, Carl's, Carl's uh, show was already made and then a few weeks later I put that show on and Tommy came to me and said, they want me to fight my show. And he said, what do you think I should do? I said, I'm already committed to Carl. I've, I've already, um, that, that date's already in. If you're going to take the fight, I won't be able to do the corner. And he was real confident and he said, no, I think, I, I, honestly, I just get nice through the corner, I think I can do it. And, um, and he's had that sort of performance in him for a long time. And I'm a big believer in everything happens for a reason and all the lessons, what he's learned over the years and the mistakes he's made and the way, you know, the losses, what he's had, they all, made him into the fighter he is today and the person he is today and uh, he come full circle from the Derry Matthews fight you know he was boxing great and he made that mistake in the 10th round he paid the ultimate price but he come full circle he was back in Liverpool against the Scouser for the Commonwealth title and, and pulled it off pulled it off brilliantly and I think him being around fighters like Carl Martin Murray Rocky Fielding you know he's they're rubbing off on him he's he's never really truly believed in his own ability because I've been telling him how good he is and how good he can box but he, he's always questioned it, whereas now he's around other fighters and he sees the way they go about the job, and then, then they're giving him compliments, saying, "Tommy, you can box. You know, you can box like fuck, basically." Mm. And uh, 
Carl Frampton sparred him 10 weeks ago and I think the penny dropped with him. He sort of come out and said, Tommy, honestly, you need to box like that. Your jab's brilliant, you know, um, be smarter. And uh, I think it all sunk in and paid off in the night. I'm, I'm absolute, I'm disappointed I wasn't there because we've sort of had a journey together for the last five years, but I'm more happy Danny, I'm disappointed. I'm, I'm, I'm over the moon for Tommy. He's, he's, he means the world to him. But, I mean, it shows the great level of confidence within your gym that, you know, after sort of assessing it and thinking N Nigel Travis will be in the corner and, you know, that's, that'll work. So N N Nigel's been with us for five years. You know, it's not it's not anything alien for Tommy. It was just the fact that... And, and me and Tommy have got a, cl a close bond. That's more to do with your him. relationship with yeah, Tommy. Yeah, I, I, I've got a close bond with him. He's like a, he's like a son or a, or a younger brother to me. And... Uh, but the other night, I think it, it worked well that I wasn't there in a way because he had to sort of take responsibility on his own shoulders rather than relying on me a little bit. And, uh, and I think timing-wise, it was perfect. So all the lads, you know, the gym's buzzing. And, and uh, God, what, what a year we're having so far. Mate, mate, long may continue. In your opinion, how much are people overlooking Martin Murray for this fight with Billy Joe Saunders? He's being linked with, you know, potential fights before yeah, this one. Yeah has even taken place on June the 23rd. So is that fair to say people are overlooking Murray? I think people are. Yeah. I don't think Billy Joe is. No, no, I think absolutely. Billy Joe understands, and Dominic King will understand that it's a tough fight. Um, I th so, and and I, I think they believe they'll win, but they'll, they'll, they'll have a, a tough 12 rounds. Um, and that may be the case, but I'm very, very confident in Martin Murray, honestly. He's, uh, he's, he's another fighter who's, you know, for, for, for whatever reason this scenario has come around all these fighters have come together and ended up in my gym where they're all different types of characters but they all sort of complement each other and there's no there's no egos they all just get along with each other and they're all helping each other push each other on and, and uh, there's a great vibe there's positive energy coming from there and uh, honestly I think he, he's 35 years old and I feel he's going to put in the performance of his career what have you made of this situation with Golovkin and Canelo? I think Canelo is um, obviously you know, failing two drug tests is, is outrageous. Um, it's, for me, it has no place in our sport. It's, it's dangerous in the sport as it is. So, so I don't, I don't think the, the punishment's strict enough. I think um, you know six months he's nothing he's, had, he's, he's injured in any way so he would have been out for six months he'll still be out of box uh, Golovkin in September but I don't think that should be the case I think Canelo should should um, sort of pay a price he's, he's not paid no fine financially he'll, he'll get a massive payday so my, in my book the winner of this fight should box Golovkin in September uh, Martin gave him a good fight last time but um, it was you know it's tough going but I feel Martin's a better fighter now than he was then more experienced obviously um, and Golovkin's getting a little bit older so so I know Martin's older but, but I've just got a feeling that the way he's performing at the minute the, the places in mentally I, I keep saying this lately but the mentality of a fighter wins you or loses you a fight you know you can be as fit as, as you possibly can, you can be in talent, but if you mentally fall apart before the fight, you're not going to win. But he's, he's in a great place mentally and physically, so uh, I'm, I'm so looking forward to the fight. And you know, if if we have to go up against Golovkin, if he pulls this off against Billy Joe, then uh, the world's his oyster. Jamie Moore, thank you very much for coming to IFL TV, and uh, best of luck in the rest of your camp. And I'm sure we'll catch up with you ahead of June 23rd again. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Unbeaten fighters and major performers. I can't tell you how excited I am about this.